Hello everyone. Welcome to Principles of Communication System lecture series. In this lecture video, we are going to discuss about introduction to noise in analog modulation and receiver model. Often we find some sort of noises around our environment when the some events, festival, marriages occurs. It makes the life of human being very unpleasant and some noises can't be tolerated. So, in any communication system, when the signal is transmitted or while receiving the signal, some interruption may occur into the communication making, making the receiver unpleasant disturbances, which results in pointing out the quality of the communication. Such disturbances is called a communication noises. So in audio amplifier, the noise occurs in the form of audible is or crackle at the output of an audio amplifier when the gain control is set to at a maximum, maximum with no input. In FM or AM receiver, the noise is aired when an AM or FM receiver is not tuned to any station but set to a position between two stations. In case of video amplifier, noise has snow-like appearance on the TV screen when the TV set is tuned to weak station. Thus, if only a very small voltage is available, such as a weak radio, TV, radar, etc., the signal, it may not be possible to distinguish the signal from the background noises. To understand and analysis of the noise in continuous wave modulation system, we need receiver model. The customary practice is to model the receiver noise or channel noise as a additive, white and Gaussian. These simplification assumptions enable us to obtain a basic understanding of the way in which noise affect the performance of, of the receiver. Now we will look into receiver model. The idea of an modeling is fundamental to study of all physical systems including communication systems through modeling. So we improve our understanding of the capabilities and limitations of a systems. In formulating a receiver model of study of noise in continuous wave modulating system, we need to keep the following points in mind. The first point is the model provides an adequate description of the, of the form of receiver noise that is of common concern. The second point is the model accounts for an inherent filtering and modulation characteristics of the system. The third one is the model is simple enough for a statistical analysis of the system to be possible. For the situation, at end, we propose to use the receiver model. So this is this is a one one of the receiver model. It consists of adder, bandpass filter, and demodulator. Demodulator. So adder inputs are modulated signal S of T, and noise is W of T, and output of the adder is connected to bandpass filter. And bandpass filter output is X of T, and output of the bandpass filter is applied to demodulator circuit. So across the demodulator circuit, we receive the modulating signal. The modulating signal, modulating signal is M dash of T. So M of T, for example, you take M of T is the transmitted signal, and receiving signal is M dash of T. S of T is the modulating signal, it denotes the incoming modulating signal. So this is the incoming modulated signal. The W of T, so this is the W of T, is denote the front end receiver noise. 
the power spectrum density of the noise w of t is denoted by n naught by 2 so defined for both positive and negative frequencies n naught is the average noise power per unit bandwidth is measured at the front end of the receiver the bandwidth of this bandpass filter is just wide enough to pass the modulating signal without distortion assume the bandpass filter is ideal having the bandwidth is equal to the transmission bandwidth b subscript t of the modulating signal s of t and the mid band frequency is equal to the carrier frequency fc so fc is much greater than transmission bandwidth so this is the ideal characteristics of the bandpass filter noise the power spectrum density is n naught by 2 and center frequencies are 2 one is positive fc and another one is negative center frequency minus fc and transmission bandwidth is b subscript t the filtered noise n of t may be treated as a narrow band noise is rep represented in the canonical forum the canonical forum n of t is equal to n i of t into cos 2 pi f c t minus n q of t sin 2 pi f c t where the n i of t is the in phase noise component and n q of t is the quadrature noise component both measured with respect to the carrier wave the carrier wave is a c cos 2 pi f c t so this is the in phase component the input signal is carrier input carrier is cos 2 pi f c t and input carrier signal so we connect it to 90 degree phase shifter and phase shift value in terms of sin 2 pi f c t so n i of t is the in phase value in phase noise component and n q of t is the quadrature phase noise component the filtered signal x of t is available for the demodulation is defined by x of t is equal to s of t plus n of t is this is the bandpass filter the bandpass filter will output we represent in terms of x of t so this is the x of t the x of t is equal to s of t plus n of t so here s of t is the modulating signal so we connected to adder and noise is w of t or n of t so we connected to connected to adder the adder output is s of t plus n of t so s of t plus n of t we apply to bandpass filter so bandpass filter output is x of t so x of t is equal to s of t plus n of t s of t plus n of t is the input of the bandpass filter the average noise power at the demodulator input is equal to the total area under the curve of power spectrum density sn of f the average noise power is equal to 2 into transmission bandwidth into power spectrum density of the noise the density power spectrum density of the noise is n naught by 2 here 2 and 2 is get cancelled and remaining values are b subscript t into n naught The input signal to noise ratio SNR input is defined as the SNR input is equal to average power of the modulating signal S of t divided by average power of the filtered noise N of t. The S of t is the modulating signal input and average power of the filtered noise is N of t. So W of t is the noise and filtered noise we represent in terms of N of t. So SNR input is equal to S of t divided by N of t. The output signal to noise ratio SNR output is defined as SNR output is equal to average power of the demodulating message signal divided by average power of the noise. The SNR output so we measured at the receiver output the average power of the demodulating signal so this is the demodulating signal output the average power of the noise is this is the average power of the noise 
the channel signal to noise ratio is the SNR channel is equal to average power of the modulating signal divided by average power of the noise in the message bandwidth. So SNR channel, so we, we measured at the receiving input. So here we measure the receiving input and here we measure the SNR output. This ratio may be viewed as the signal to noise ratio that result from the baseband or direct transmission of the message signal M of T without modulation as demonstrated in the following figure. So this is the block diagram. So it consists of summer circuit and low pass filter. The message signal with the same power as the modulating wave is applied to summer and noise W of T is added with the summer circuit and the output of the summer circuit so we apply to low pass filter the message power at the low pass filter input is adjusted to the same as the average power of the modulated signal the low pass filter passes the message signal and rejects the output of band noises the figure of merits of the receiver model or receiver is the figure of merit is equal to signal to noise ratio of the output divided by signal to noise ratio of the channel. For the purpose of comparing the different continuous wave, continuous wave modulation system, we normalize the receiver performance by dividing the output signal to noise ratio by the channel signal to noise ratio. So channel to signal noise ratio is SNRC and output is output signal to noise ratio is SNRO. The higher value of the figure of merits merit the better will be the noise performance of the receiver. The figure of merit may equal to 1 be less than 1 or be greater than 1. It depends depending, depending on the type of modulation used. Thank you.